This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And this week, he's taking a look at the iconic weapons from the Gears of War franchise. Between that round count and the uh, sound on reloading, it's pretty clear where the lineage comes from, I felt. I failed to notice what the round count was. Eight rounds. Oh, I see we- Ah, did I just hear a ping? You just heard a ping. Unfortunately, Jonathan's camera had a few tech issues again for this record, so there are a few frame rate issues with this footage, but hopefully you'll enjoy this deep dive into the Gears of War weapons regardless. If you missed it, the Lancer got a video all to its own, so if you've not seen that, make sure you go back and check it out. But without further ado, it's over to Jonathan. The good old Nasher. If you're British, you'll immediately think of Dennis the Menace, uh, our version of Dennis the Menace, very different to the American one. His dog was called Nasher. I think that's completely irrelevant. Gnashing, as in gnashing of teeth, of course, and it really does chew up the enemy pretty well. Seeing the pattern on this uh, toilet wall here um, is interesting because I've not, never looked at that in detail. One, two, three, four, five, six very large pieces of shot. So this is not your typical eight or nine piece 32-ish caliber round buckshot. This is much bigger than that. They're big, they're wide. The spread at approximately two meters uh, or yards if you prefer is pretty big. So this is a traditional video game shotgun with a lot of spread, a lot of power, and a lot of damage drop off, if I remember right, if I remember rightly, at distance. Inspiration clearly is the Winchester 1887. We, we've had this on before, but you can get a better look at it now. This is a lovely short barreled handy version, much like the one in Terminator 2, only that had its buttstock cut off and a large loop cocking lever, which this fictional equivalent also has and it's utilized in when the reload is ended we get the flip cocking so famous in terminator 2 and true grit so we get to have our science fiction cake and eat it too by having a very traditional type of weapon that has a very futuristic aesthetic partly due to a heat shield around the barrel that makes it feel like a, a part of the weapon family with the lancer but would be really pointless in a, a lever action shotgun that said the amount of rounds we're putting through this thing you probably would need some sort of heat dissipation even the reload is very 1887 in that we fired our last shot and we have to open the action to load the magazine tube, which is down here. Uh, not the case with other lever actions where you would tend to, tend to have the action shut and you'd load either from underneath or from the side. So it's very clearly Winchester 1887 inspired, despite looking almost nothing like it, really. So the upgraded Nasher is weirdly retro. It has more detail, but it's also got chunkier parts on it and it feels less sci-fi. It feels much more Fallout like And the lever, which was more of an 1887 sort of arrangement on the original, the Nasher, which just doesn't get a Mark II or anything. Instead, it has this semi-integral, it has a vertical pistol grip essentially. And the loading lever, the cocking lever is I mean, integral with the trigger guard, sort of so is the 1887, but here it doesn't have the guts drop out <laughs> loading mechanism of the real thing. Don't know, I don't like the design as much. I actually like the more high-tech look of the earlier gun. It's very chunky, it has a lot of straight edges on it. It's still cool, but I, I prefer the, the original. I didn't spend a great deal of time using this this weapon, but I remember, I remember somewhat liking it. So it's a it's a quad not ha, not satisfied with a quad barrel shotgun. They've given it two shots on each barrel as well. Quad barrel weapons are uncommon for obvious reasons. This is almost the same size as a M202 Flash, which is a four barreled rocket launcher. But it isn't that. It's a shotgun, massively big bore shotgun with a slightly fudged reload where we open a lid and shove the round in. Now we don't have anything equivalent to that. Obviously, but in a in a teaser for a future episode of our own Royal Armoury series, I just want to show you this. This is a quad-barreled weapon. I'm not going to say anything more. I know that's really unfair, but tough. It's a it's a to try to encourage you over to our, our own channel. Really irrelevant to this, other than it has four barrels, which is really rare. 
Triple barrel shotguns occasionally pop up. They're not very practical because double barrel shotguns are usually used for sporting purposes and the weight, uh, you can't be fast with a triple barrel gun. And if you want a tactical shotgun, there are much better options than three or four barrels. So four barrel weapons like that are, well, usually sort of a niche, let's put it that way. It's, I think it's amazing how much the magazine lends to the identity of, of a weapon, especially the Kalashnikov, which I think is clearly what the, what's being referenced here with the curved magazine that's on the hammer burst, because otherwise it looks absolutely nothing like an AK. In fact, it's very spacey sci-fi. Apparently no functional sights on the thing. I guess we can tell from the way the locusts shoot in the game that they're, they're not the the most accurate in the world. We have a color scheme thing going on as well with that, with the locust weapons. They're all sort of reddish, orange, kind of alien looking. Cause even though they come from the ground, they are essentially alien to humans. So they have their own aesthetic and it's implied they've developed this, this parallel technology, whether from some common original ancestor of Lancer and Hammerburst, I don't know. Inverting the real history of the M16 going burst fire and the AK not until much, much later. The Hammerburst is in fact, a burst fire, which is kind of intriguing because burst fire is introduced as a way to essentially get around training problem, which is to not fire all your ammunition or to fire so many rounds in a burst that you are becoming inaccurate. It's about artificially maintaining accuracy and reducing wastage of ammunition. That's essentially the two reasons why you would ever do it. And it was done in the US um, uh, military before it was ever done on the um, Soviet slash Russian side of things. So I have to wonder what the thought process was with the Locust designers as to why they threw caution to the wind with no butt stock and no sights, but somehow felt that a burst limiter was important. So what's weird about the updated hammer burst is it almost seems more Lancer-like, just in, in every respect. Even even the round feature above uh, in front of the magazine that is on the Lancer, and I don't think was on the Hammer Burst, or at least wasn't so so obvious. And I don't remember also, there's an equivalent sort of arm that we used to have on the Lancer and don't now in this game. That you, So you're sort of inserting your curved AK mag into that, and then that's locking everything into place. So it's like undoing the great advantage of a rock and lock magazine setup, where it's super positive and it's in and locked and it's never coming off the gun unless you really hit that paddle by accident in the wrong place. So you're losing that advantage by having this weird armature thing and just something about the shape of it and yeah, it's like it's become more cog than it used to be. And I don't think that's deliberate. So this, this was a lot of fun. It, it really leaned into the sort of gory overkill feel of the of Gears. Not in any way a practical game. In fact, I can't remember its sort of in-game lore, but it's almost not a weapon. Or, or it's a sort of improvised weapon? I'm not even sure. I remember using it, I don't know, it's it's somewhat unique. By shoot, shooting circular saw blades, essentially, you get quite a, you increase your probability of hit because the things are so wide, and it does, it does quite a bit of damage. Um, how you could get this to work, firing multiple shots, or any shots, of, you know, projecting a round spinning disc like that would be really hard to do, I think. Well, toys do it. I, I suspect that some crazy person has already tried to do this, and I just haven't seen it. It's called the buzz kill, which is uh, amusing as well, because it certainly does do that. Between that round count and the uh, sound on reloading, it's pretty clear where the lineage comes from, I felt. I failed to notice what the round count was. Eight rounds. Oh, see, we ah, did I just hear a ping? You just heard a ping. DMR type rifle. And it's kind of implied that these, this family of weapons, different color, different design and aesthetic, that they're from another nation or another, you know, within the world of, of Gears of War. I never looked into that. I think that's the intention. And I get a, I get a bit of an SVD vibe from this Dragonov insofar as it's a semi-automatic precision rifle. And the SVD comes with iron sights and is usable with iron sights, but it's really designed for use for the scope. And we have uh, the, the way the bolt and the cocking handle are arranged Ranged is, is reminiscent of Galil, I guess. No, nothing on it is, is strictly connected to a real world gun, but 
as Dave has pointed out, eight rounds and then a ping. So you can almost see this as a, a very distant cousin of the Garand for the eight rounds and the ping. This is tangential, but I found it quite interesting is that it's the enemy faction, enemy human faction, the um, UIR, Union of Independent Republics. You can see one in like a, a COG museum, I think it is, and it's described as a finicky, inelegant weapon used by UIR cowards, which is weird to me because it's such like an American icon or based on an American icon. It, it, its DNA comes from an American icon. And yet like mm. the video game sci-fi lineage of that weapon has been given to UIR cowards. That is fascinating because the enemy is whoever you're facing, I suppose. So, but yeah, it, the, the the default were if, if you were, and they clearly are referencing the guarantee, I think that's undeniable, to consciously choose to make the space Americans the enemy is interesting at the very least. Hell yeah. Alright, the long shot. Spent a lot of time behind this thing. Certainly my favorite weapon for, for horde mode. Sort of functions more like a DMR, really, because of the, the compressed ranges of the and the levels, the way they're set out. But it is bolt action. And you I always come back to this thing of why would a space sci-fi gun have bolt action? But balance is obviously the reason. And it's nicely animated. We see the, the character lift up the bolt handle, pull it to the rear. You get a real sense of the, the physicality of the weapon, thanks to that third person view. Very satisfying to use uh, the timed reload where you get the more powerful shot, if you get it right, uh, even more right, is especially important for this weapon with its low round count. And it's just very satisfying to use in, in every respect. So though it may not make a huge amount of sense in a futuristic context, I don't care. It's, a, it's, a, it's the archetypal video game sniper rifle, really. Got one. Ah, the torque bow. Extremely cool mechanic-wise reflecting something of real world archery in terms of having more range the further back you pull obviously in detail it doesn't work like a real bow in any way it's far from clear how the i'll call it a prod <laughs> or the or the arms of the bow as it were it's far from clear how those even interact with the projectile how is the energy actually being stored up to to shoot this thing answers in the comments it's attached via pistons that compress into themselves, like like hydraulic pistons. Hard to see how those would be linked up to any kind of launch system for the bolt. I guess if well, it would make it would make sense if those pistons are creating that resistance, so they're replacing the springiness of a, of a, of a prod. But then, where's the connection to throw the bolt forward? Like, like there's nothing that's going through the receiver of the weapon behind where the bolt would be to actually fling it out, if you see what I mean. But great weapon, the explosive bolts, I think that's a callback to Rambo, Predator, that kind of thing. The whole idea of a futuristic, of, of science fiction archery taken to such extremes was was great. And, and you, you, it was another sense of relief when you picked up one of these. The Mulcher, what a brilliant weapon this is. You semi-hip fire it for devastating close range use and you mount it for pretty devastating longer range use. It's almost without downside other than its limited capacity. Uh, not really clear how this thing feeds. We do get cartridge cases coming out of it in traditional video game perpendicular fashion. They should be, well, actually in a weapon like this, that's one time where that sort of works, but they should be dropping out the bottom per perpendicular knot. If they're being ejected out the side like that at force, I guess if it's a rotating breach like a traditional Gatling, then they may be being flung out as they reach the ejection port, which would make sense for them coming out perpendicular. I am rambling, but this is the kind of thing that I end up obsessing about <laughs> for your enjoyment. Oh, shit. Uh, yes, the Baltock. I think this is probably tied with the original Half-Life Magnum for my favorite Magnum revolver in a game of all time. It's so powerful. The sound effects, certainly for the time, for the original games were incredible. It's really making the most out of those limited shots. It's this it, uh, absolutely classic use of low round count, high power, 
Dirty Harry in space. Kind of <laughs> very sci-fi looking, but still swing out cylinder. It's even got the ratchet sound when you spin the, the cylinder for the reload. But the whole overall design is full on video game sci-fi. So it's like the benchmark for how to do a, a sci-fi Magnum. This is something a bit different. <laughs> this is the Century Manufacturing mother load. One of a range of gigantic, ridiculous revolvers made well apparently to commemorate the anniversary of the single action army revolver which is broadly what this is and it is as huge and heavy as it looks so the mother load is in 4570 an old black powder military rifle cartridge so it, it's huge kind of like if hellboy took place in the old west this is what I'd expect him to have as his Samaritan. So really not that representative of the in-game Boltock, but uh, Dave said you're going to want the biggest Magnum revolver, or the biggest revolver, sorry, that you have. And uh, this is the biggest revolver we have. See you later. Boomshot, another iconic Gears of War weapon and one of the best grenade launchers in video game history for my money both in terms of well in terms from the beginning how you come across it you first encounter the the uh the enemy type that uses it they're pretty scary yeah they're, they're a great um enemy type and their weapon is part of their sort of identity as it were and then you might you get your hands on one and you've got limited shots but very powerful you know turn pe turn enemies into chunks so there's no there's none of this disappointment of, a, of an underpowered weapon that seems like it should be more powerful this this thing is absolutely spot on and you would treasure the rounds you had and conserve them for as long as or i, I would anyway great name great design the pump action front end where, where half the gun moves when you when you pump it really suits the the you know, the fact these are all big chunky massive guys the whole thing works big drum type magazine on there with and with that locust reddish colored rustic aesthetic if you like right well that was a lot of fun guys those were the guns of almost the entire um, gears of war franchise and certainly all of the, the the main games very nostalgic for me um to the point where uh, the night before my wedding i was playing gears of war with my wife in a different building <laughs> gives you an idea of of how things are at home but i uh, hope you enjoyed it and uh check out all the royal armories the youtube channel the social media the museums if you can we, we appreciate it um but we'll see you again next time